Hi, welcome to this brief walkthrough of Harvard. So what exactly is Harvard? Um, Harvard allows you to connect your cloud accounts, so namely AWS, Azure, or GCP, and it will automatically generate uh, diagram sets for every virtual network or VPC um, discovered. So this allows you to get a, a clarity and line of sight on what you've got running without having to spend um, hours or days or weeks uh, trying to document uh, complex networks with uh, a drawing package and your cloud consoles. There is uh, no opportunity to uh, introduce human error either because it's automated. You don't you know, get to add resources to a diagram that does, don't really exist. And likewise, you don't miss anything because uh, the cloud console settings are polled and uh, everything gets generated from there. So if we have a look at, this is our environment dashboards, so all the diagrams that are automatically generated will populate this screen here. Uh, if we open up this uh, AWS uh, VPC, what you can see here is the, the diagram canvas. Uh, you can uh, control how that looks. The green rectangle here is your VPC and then surrounding that are different resources um, external to the VPC. Within the VPC itself, you've got um, here the uh, availability zones um, here, so USDs 1D here, for instance. Um, then within the AZs, you've got the your subnets that are configured within the AZ. And then within each of those subnets, you've got the resources that are um, configured and running. So we look at um, here, for instance, you've got some elastic load balancers. So what you see on the right hand side is an attribute pane. So as you connect uh, or you click on a particular resource across on the right hand side, the, the metadata related to that uh, resource is displayed. So the main reason for this is it saves a bucket load of time having to flip backwards and forwards between consoles and the diagram to work out what this thing is what it connects to, uh, what security group it belongs to, um, its IP addresses, um, what volumes are connected, that sort of thing. So that's the um, yeah the beauty of the attribute pane. Uh, there's a bit of a skew view there if you're into that sort of thing. And then also the diagram controls allow you to set a number of things on or off. So at the moment we've got names and connections displayed as default. So if you don't want the gray lines showing you what resources are connected, you can get rid of those. But what happens when you select a, a resource, um, those connections are displayed. So you can see from this load balancer where it sends traffic. So namely these two EC2 instances here. What happens with uh, Harvard is it polls your cloud config um, periodically, whether it's daily or hourly, uh, depending on on what uh, you know what plans you're on, then it will um, detect changes. And when changes are detected, it automatically generates a new um, diagram. And then the instead of just overwriting uh, the previous one, it takes the the superseded diagram and places it in versioning, so in version history. So when you um, look at a live account, you'll have you know, lots of different versions um, running down the line. So this is particularly important for audits. Um, so you can see what's changed since your last, you know, PCI compliance audit, for instance. But also if you're getting some unexpected network um, activity or, or behavior, so applications crashing for some reason, um, then you can look at what was running yesterday versus what's running today and then, then diff, diff the two and find out you know, what resources are missing or have been changed um, in the interim that might be causing that problem. So it can allow you to zone, like zoom right into issues very, very quickly. So down the bottom here, we've got a number of different views that you can look at. So you've got um, the extended infrastructure view, which is a uh, greater, um, more spread out with a bit more information on the on the resources that are on the diagram. Uh, as default with the 
the infrastructure view, it's kept as clean as possible. So you've just got a resource. You don't have, you know, 12 different things on trying to, to cram on the diagram to tell you what's going on. That's um, the job of the attribute pane on the side. The uh, list view is another view that's created. So this, what this does is lists every single thing that was detected um, when Harvest scanned your console settings. So there are a number of things that don't make it to the diagram, um, things like volumes. So they are um, held within the, the list view so you can see exactly everything that's on there as opposed to, you know, if we tried to cram uh, every single thing onto the diagram, it would be, you know, completely unreadable like these network interfaces. You might have, you know, literally hundreds of those. Uh, so they are not, not visualized, but they are still recorded. So you can hop into the list view and see exactly what's uh, running where. You can also sort this list by, um, say, price. And what that will do is sort your resources by an estimated cost. And then you can sort those uh, by descending price. So you can see exactly what's costing the most money within a, a particular VPC. Uh, beauty of that is you can also then export that to a spreadsheet. And then if your accounting people are really into sort of uh, analyzing where the money's going, then, then you can show them um, with a couple of clicks of a button. Uh, another very unique feature of Harva is the security view. So this is a security team's um, you know, Nirvana, if you like. So what it does is displays all of your security groups that are detected within the within this VPC. It shows you when you select one of the security groups, it shows you uh, what it is, um, your ingress and egress IP addresses, you've got your, all the connected resources that are associated that that group controls. So if we look at this one, for instance, you can see um, with this particular group, we've got a TCP connection coming in and then an all connection going out um, to the internet. Uh, on top of the diagram, you have your ports that are configured. So here you can see um, within this particular security group, we've got a number of ports um, open. So we've got port 11211 and then another one on six, seven, um, six, three, seven, nine. So we get to know the protocol that's running and also the port um, where it's running from and where it's running to. So your security team can look at this diagram and immediately say, hey, well, hello, what's this? Um, you know, that shouldn't be open and they can kind of visually spot problems um, that will be quite difficult to determine um, just going through console settings. The, another diagram that's created uh, when you um, scan your cloud accounts, if you've got any containerized workloads, so either native containers like ECS or EKS or AKS, um, a container diagram will get generated for that. Uh, you can also connect uh, standalone Kubernetes clusters and then just have a, a standalone um, container diagram. So if we have a look at this demo one here, um, you can see we've got here uh, the ECS cluster as the, as the bounding um, container. But then in turn, inside that we've got ECS services. And then within that, we have, we've got ECS tasks. And see the tasks are color coded. So that allows you to see uh, the state of your running tasks or pods. So green is, um, is go, it's all okay. It's running. Um, yellow, it will be a starting or stopping um, service. And then if you've got a red uh, one, which we don't have here, it will tell you that something has stopped uh, where the ideal um, desired state is running. So you can see if you've got problems with a um, stopped or crashed um, workload. So on top of the infrastructure, 
um, security and container diagrams. We've also got um, reporting. So reporting is for AWS at the moment. Um, so it shows you a essentially a compliance report for your AWS configuration. So comparing your your config against the uh, AWS well-architected best practice, it will tell you um, things like what regions you've got in play, um, the resources that you're running, um, IAM um, users and roles, and whether they're active or inactive. Um, so best practice is if you've got inactive users or roles, you should really get rid of them. Um, it then tells you um, a bunch of findings based on um, whether it's a uh, just informational, like there's something running that you know, that might be um, a better way to do things. You've got some low priority, so there is definitely a problem, but it's not critical. You've got medium, which is getting a, a little bit more critical, and then you've got high priority, so you've got a you know serious maybe security issue um, that needs to be re resolved. So. Um, you know, like a medium issue here is telling you guard duty is not enabled when, um, you know, ideally it would be, um, or some low priority. Um, so then we've got an IM role security issue here. So it really is a, a snapshot of, um, you know, how well your uh, config is, is compliant to um, AWS best practice. Uh, we've also got, so we had a look before at the uh, ways you can export um, diagrams. So you can take out PDFs and, and um, Visio type documents. Um, get back into there. Just show you that. So we've got an export. So if you're preparing management reports, so PDF and PNG um, are quite useful. If you want to take your diagram out to Visio to edit it. Then we've got a VSDX export, so you can use Draw Draw IO or, or Visio to then start making changes. Um, we don't have an edit feature within Harvard, uh, and that's for a reason. Um, we want the diagrams to be a hundred percent auditable. So the you know when you've got a compliance audit coming up, you've got hard concrete evidence of what's running, what has been running. Um, what's changed since the last audit, uh, which is uh, what the auditors want to see. Uh, you can also, if you want to do some programmatic comparisons or analysis, you can take the whole config out to CSV um, or JSON. So you might have two diagrams, you can take JSON out to of, for both versions and then run a diff through them um, to, to readily identify, you know, if you've got a, a very complex uh, environment with with thousands of resources, then you might want to you know code that as opposed to try and visually um, compare them. So that's really Harvard in a nutshell. It um, it's useful for um, a working out exactly what you've got running where at, at any point in time. Um, if you take on a new client um, network. You'll know within a couple of minutes what they're running, where it's running. So when we took on clients for consulting a, a long time ago, uh, you know it, it might take two, three, four days. The first job to do was work out what was running. So we would have to, you know, hit hit the hit the cloud consoles, hit the whiteboard, and then map everything out. So with Harvard, you just connect some read-only credentials, and boom, you've just got the exactly what's running where, without any assumptions or opinion involved it's just it is what it is it's a source of truth um, and you're uh, good to go also very useful for onboarding new engineers or onboarding external consultants so again they don't have to spend any time whatsoever in the consoles they can just just give them a copy of the, the diagram and then away you go um, so back to the environments dashboard there's a number of um, options here so we've got something called projects, which allow you to group together uh, environments under different projects and then allocate team members to 
specific project. So you can restrict access to um, sets of diagrams per team. Um, the one of the most powerful features of Harva is the uh, search and filter um, options. So up here you can go looking for any of these different types of resources. So particular region, um, resource IDs, names, VPC IDs, uh, resource groups in Azure, um, projects in GCP uh, types. So this allows you to build a, a diagram on the fly. So you can uh, do a search on, you know, maybe two different VPCs um, and have them appear on the same diagram. So you could have a uh, an AWS environment and then an Azure environment on the same diagram. So if you're running a hybrid uh, solution, then you can get both environments on the same diagram at the same time, even though they're different vendors. Um, if you are an MSP and you're managing um, hundreds or thousands of accounts and they are connected to the one Harva account as data sources, then you can use this box to find resources very quickly. So if you had a, you know, maybe a, an alert or a log entry with concerns about a specific IP address, um, you could um, do an IP search here for um, that particular IP address and it will go and search all, you know, 1000 accounts looking for any, any instances of that IP address. So if you're unsure of where exactly, you know, which environment a specific resource is located, instead of having to log into each client account one by one by one, uh, you can simply execute this search and it will simultaneously search whatever accounts you have connected to um, Harva. So uh, another use of this is you could, um, you know, if you're a database admin, you could go look for a specific resource type and then pick any of the resources um, that are supported by Harva. So um, you might want, um, you know, all of your MariaDB servers um, uh, on Azure listed. So this would create a single diagram with whatever uh, databases it can locate, irrespective of what, what um, networks they belong to. So you can get a list of all, all your databases or all your RDS instances from, from your AWS accounts. So that's um, quite a powerful feature. Uh, also, we've got uh, a number of integrations that make Harva you know, extremely useful, sort of embedding into, into external documentation, wikis, or invoking diagrams um, as part of your CI CD processes. So you can, um, we've got, for instance, um, a provider in Terraform. So you can born diagrams and trigger Harva events from um, within your Terraform um, scripts. You can um, do a similar thing with um, GitHub Actions. So we've got a, um, a plugin for GitHub that allows you to create or refresh diagrams um, when you're deploying um, infrastructure as code. Um, we've got a Atlassian um, Marketplace uh, viewer. So you can embed Harvard diagrams quite easily within your um, Confluence Wiki uh, if you're using that sort of thing. You've got also a um, full API. So all of, all of the developer stuff is fully documented within Harva. We've got an open API um, for certain levels of accounts. So if you've got API access within this API framework, you've got all of the commands to basically add environments, add teams, um, create new diagrams, uh, refresh diagrams, basically everything you can do within the Harvard console, you can do programmatically, uh, which is you know, what most uh, you know, engineers prefer. So there we go, that's a quick run through of Harvard. Thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you in some more um, detailed feature videos um, following this one. Thanks, bye.